astronauts will begin their trip to the International Space Station Wednesday night, and it starts with a ride on the Soyuz spacecraft. They'll be joining another three-person crew already on board the ISS. Bill Harwood is in Merritt Island, Florida via Skype and joins me now. So, uh, Bill, first of all, let's just talk about getting into space. Things are a little bit different this time around with this well, particular spacecraft, well, right? Well, that's right, Elaine. They're flying the first time this upgraded version of the Soyuz. They call it the MS series for modernized systems. It's got a better radar system, better avionics across the board. Uh, the thrusters have been reconfigured. It's just a, a more efficient spacecraft, more power, more redundancy. And this will be the first time they're putting some of these systems to the test in their piloted version of the Soyuz. They've already tested most of these systems on their unmanned progress cargo ships, but this is the first time with people on board. All right. And remind us, Bill, uh, the difference that we're going to be seeing here momentarily once this launch actually gets underway, the cameras are actually inside, right, the Soyuz? Right. And that's not unusual for the Russians. They put cameras inside for launch. We see that. Uh, typically on all these launches, which is always a lot of fun to uh, to see the cosmonauts and astronauts as they're in those very cramped seats uh, riding uphill on this rocket. And how long is it going to take for them to actually get to the International Space Station? Well, this time around, because it's the first flight of this new vehicle, it's going to take uh, two days. They're going to get there just after midnight Friday. They want to put all these systems through their paces, give it a road test, if you will. Mm. Normally, they like to do this in just four orbits. So on a typical Soyuz launch, they're at the station six hours after they take off. But for this one, they're going back to a way they used to do it and take two full days just to give them some time to test all these systems out. Now, among the astronauts is NASA astronaut Kate Rubens. She is a uh, she has a Ph.D. in cancer biology. Uh, That's about, right. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about her as we wait for the final countdown here. A uh, very brilliant scientist. She's going to be a big boon to the uh, research on board the space station. This is her first flight. Uh, but she's a very experienced researcher, and she's looking forward to running a whole battery of biological experiments on, on board. And we're now just a few seconds from launch, so I think we should probably sit back and give it a listen. All right. Launch command has been issued. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Set flight speed. Engines at maximum thrust. And liftoff of Kate Rubens, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Takuya Onishi now on their way to the International Space Station. 15 seconds into the flight, everything is nominal. Everything is fine on board. Uh, this is it. Good. Good first stage performance. So he's delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from its four, four boosters and single engine. The first stage of the Soyuz measured 68 feet in length and 24 feet in diameter, and it burns liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds of flight. Stabilization is performing as planned. Everything is fine on board. One minute now into today's flight of the Soyuz MS-01. Velocity of the vehicle is now 1,100 miles per hour. We are fine and everything is good on board. A minute and a half into the day's flight, everything looking good on board the Soyuz. 90 seconds. A view here of the crew inside the Soyuz looking at uh, Anatoly Ivanishin and Takuya Onishi. Not seen here, but sitting next to them is Kate Rubens. And the crew here on the ground reporting that the escape tower on board the Soyuz has been jettisoned. And the uh, Soyuz four strap-on boosters have also been jettisoned. They've completed their job and dropped away at an altitude of 28 statute miles. Soyuz now traveling at about 33, or 3,350 miles an hour. 130 seconds into the flight, stabilization is nominal.
150 seconds and the ability storage to be remote. 150 seconds into the flight, a second stage thrusters are functioning nominally. Everything is uh, good. Team here on the ground reporting that the launch shroud has also been jettisoned now. The rocket's altitude is 48 miles high. Three minutes and three seconds into the flight, everything's still going well. The Soyuz traveling at a speed of about 4,700 miles an hour. And there is Kate Rubin sitting in the uh, left seat, uh, waving at the camera. Soyuz core stage performing as expected. We are watching flight engineer. Core stage of Soyuz is 56 feet in length, uh, 13 and a half feet in diameter, and it has a single engine with four fuel chambers providing between 178,000 and 222, 601 pounds of thrust for its uh, three minutes and 28 seconds of operation. Stage will continue to burn until four minute and 43 second mark. So it uses what's called a hot stage technique. The third stage will ignite while the second stage is still burning. This is why the Soyuz has an open area in between the second and third stages. Four minutes now into the flight, everything continuing to go as planned. So Soyuz begins making its way towards the International Space Station. Two hundred and fifty seconds into the flight, your pitch and roll are nominal. Uh, we are feeling fine. Everything is good on board. Four minutes and 46 seconds now into the flight. Third, third stage of the Soyuz is igniting, and the second stage is shutting down. We confirm. And we've confirmed that the uh, core booster separated at an altitude of 105 miles or 170 kilometers. The Soyuz is now uh, being propelled by a single engine of the Soyuz's third stage. This engine is providing 67,000 pounds of thrust and will burn for four minutes and two seconds. Five minutes and 45 seconds now into flight. Everything's still looking good. So he's continuing to make its way into low Earth orbit on its way to the International Space Station with Kate Rubens, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Takuya Onishi aboard. We are feeling fine. Everything is good on board. Three hundred and seventy seconds into the flight, all parameters of the structure are nominal. Everything is good on board. Four hundred seconds into the flight, stabilization is performing as planned. Seven minutes now into flight, and that uh, single engine of the third stage continuing to work just as it should. Four hundred and forty seconds into the flight, stabilization is performing 
as planned. We are feeling well and everything is good on board. Okay, the crew continuing to report that everything's going well on board. The Soyuz is now going almost 13,500 miles an hour. Once the third stage delivers the Soyuz to orbit and the module is separated, there will be a series of pre-programmed commands to be executed to prepare the Soyuz for orbital operations. These stored commands are called time tag commands and allow many of the Soyuz systems to be automatically activated by onboard computers at precise times stored in the computers. We're feeling well. Everything is good on board. Five hundred seconds into the flight, the flight is nominal. We are feeling fine. Everything is good on board. Be ready for the separation. And uh, the third stage separation being confirmed here on the ground. You saw the crew reacting to it on board there and uh, now uh, exchanging some fist bumps. The single liquid fueled engine is shut down and dropped away at an altitude of uh, 125 miles, statute miles. Soyuz capsule and crew inside are now safely in orbit and the spacecraft is automatically executing its pre-programmed commands to deploy the antennas and solar arrays. We copy you, Moscow. Everything is fine. The heating of antennas is on. We are feeling well. All right, a successful launch there. Three astronauts going to the International Space Station. Our Bill Harwood is watching alongside uh, us here. Uh, Bill, you're in Florida there. How'd things look to you? Pretty picture perfect from our perspective. I was just thinking that very thing, Elaine, picture perfect. Uh, you know, they have launched more than 1,600 of these Soyuz rockets over the years and decades. And of course, like we said before, this was the first first flight of the uh, upgraded Soyuz module, but everything went by the book as far as we can tell. It's now going to take them two days to get to the International Space Station, but so far, so good. So my uh, senior producer, Alicia, joked that it was nice of the gentleman to allow astronaut, NASA astronaut Kate Rubens, it's nice of them to let her have the window seat. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we, we started to uh, talk a little bit about her background. I think it's remarkable, uh, Bill, in this article that you wrote, uh, it's so interesting. She applied to NASA on a bit of a whim, you write, and was surprised when she was accepted as one of 14 astronaut candidates in 2009. Uh, tell us a little bit more about her and what kind of research she's going to be conducting. Well, she's a super achiever. There's no question about that. She has a Ph.D. from Stanford in cancer biology. And got the, I'll say she got the bug. I hate to put it that way. Uh, but she went off. To, she really got interested in viruses and that whole uh, process in high school. She worked uh, with local public health officials for HIV awareness. She, uh, after she got her Ph.D., she's gone to Africa multiple times uh, to study the Ebola virus and, and related viruses to look at possible pharmaceutical uh, solutions to those viruses. Uh, and she's going to carry out similar research in orbit, uh, not with viruses per se, but uh, a whole raft of uh, medical and biological experiments to learn more about how the human body adapts to weightlessness. That's the long-range goal of that sort of research on the station. But she's bringing a professional's eye, a professional's hand, uh, to those experiments. And she Three, said before launch, two, asked what she was going to do in her spare time. She said, I want to do experiments in my spare time. <laughs> That's fun to me. A true scientist. Uh, how long uh, is she going to be up there? How long will the others be up there at the space station? Well, right now, this, this three-person crew is scheduled to come home at the end of October on October 30th. Uh, but, but there's some talk going on right now. They may extend her stay a little bit. She may be up until December. Uh, to get a full duration stay on the station. You know, she was originally supposed to launch earlier, but they had some delays getting this MS Soyuz ready for flight. Uh, so rather than cut that flight a little bit short, they may extend them. So we'll see. Uh, but right now, she's certainly going to be up there for several months. And, and like I said, she's going to have her hands full. She's got a full schedule of research planned. All right. We'll be watching as well. Bill Harwood, thanks as always for your insight. Really appreciate it. My pleasure.